G'day, welcome to Art with Alison. I'll just show you who's by my feet today. Ruby, Ruby, Ruby. Hello, sweetie. <laughs> this is my little puppy. She's always been just over three months old now. And um, she's taken over Nala's spot. I think Nala will be here any second to reclaim. Well, they'll probably both be under my feet in a minute. <laughs> anyway, I'll get on with the with the painting, yeah. Welcome to Art with Alison. And I'll just uh, put this back how I want it so that you can see what I'm doing. I've been using the what comes off the canvases just to go over my paints to stop them drying out. Only if I'm like I did that earlier today, so it's just enough to stop them drying out for a few hours. I wouldn't do that if it was any a day or something. And here I've got a, a rubber glove over some paint. That's another way to keep them in. That can keep longer actually. I've kept paint for a couple of weeks like that and it's still been fine. Of course sealed in a container is the better way. But just letting you know some ideas and yeah just I get a lot of dust in this house because of all my dogs, so it just helps keep the dust off things. So yeah, noises that you can hear in the background are my dogs. I've got lots of dogs here, plus a new litter of puppies. I breed Labradors, so yeah, little squeaky sounds are the puppies which are only a few days old. All right, I've just done a pour. I did a what seems to be called a wrecked ring pour and I was really happy with it so I thought I'd just do another one and see how that goes I'll do it a little bit differently the other one was very pretty but had seemed to be overwhelmed with purple um, and so I thought this time I'll try and put a lot more lighter colors in there with it also still the same colors but a bit less of the darker colors and more of the contrasting so we'll see how we go so this is just a 30 by 30 centimeter canvas which is 12 inches by 12 inches so I'll start la layering my cup the main noises you can hear are the puppies with their mum they're in there suckling away mum's being very good with them which I might use Got a little bit of this here which has got the satin enamel in it. I might just use a little bit of that in there as well. Pop that down the bottom. What goes in first comes out last, of course. And if you want, well I think that's too much actually. I might pull some of that back. Don't want to, the satin enamel creates what's called the cloud effect. Um, sort of nice light and fluffy sort of effect. But don't want too much of it in the middle or you end up with this big explosion of whiteness. So we'll put that in. Okay, the colours. I'm using Araldo paints. And this one here is, let me just check, this is Eraldo Metallic Ocean Blue. The Eraldo uh, paints you can get in Australia. I'm not sure if you can get them in other countries, but I'm sure you can find similar colours. This is, yeah, metallic, so. I've kept all my colours. They're, they're sort of mid, they're not ultra thick and they're not ultra thin. They're kind of in between, I'd say. And this one here is Metallic Fusia. And I've mixed all my paints with Floetrol. Only Floetrol, there's no, there's no water and there's no silicon in any of the paints. Just paint and Floetrol until, I just add the Floetrol until I get it to the consistency I want. It's hard, you know, often I do say how much Floetrol and Sometimes it's fairly, you know, you think, oh, okay, yes, I can say what it is because it's always consistent, but then sometimes you get a, a batch of Floetrol which isn't as 
thick or you know it might be thicker and so you, your quantities change and so yeah so then you have to add more or less floetrol basically so this one here is just Heraldo purple it's not metallic which I might now add the metallic pearl Heraldo might do a fairly good amount of this here actually just to give a bit of contrast in the painting and you see metallic treasure which is just like a lovely rich gold it's a gorgeous color and now I'm going to do this one is the metallic palm green so yeah it's not too thick not too thin but just right probably on the thicker side than you might use for some things certainly if you're going to do a Dutch pro I believe you need that very thin all right and this here is a mixture of the palm green and whatever that the ocean blue metallic ocean blue to make a nice turquoise I might put more gold here. Last one I did quite thin layers. I'm trying to do slightly thicker layers this time. Just see what difference it makes. of that and a bit more of the magenta just do a little bit of purple this time and I think I'll do a bit of the Satin enamel. This is just this is just house paint. This is British paints house paint mixed with satin enamel to about I think it was about four or five hundred grams of the house paint to which I added. No, it was, I think it was five hundred grams of the house paint. And then I added five thick scoops of this. So the satin enamel is a lot thicker. So you scoop it up, and it's quite a lot on the end of your popsicle stick and pop that in and mixed it up all right that's probably enough really maybe I'll end it with a bit more of this palm green Got to be careful with green sometimes green can take over your painting so I have discovered it's going to end up with them actually I've got just thinking oh, I'm going to end up with all these little bits but I can always pop these back I've made I've been making them up into little containers of it um, and I was in one of my previous pours with the uh, Liquitex paints I was pouring them out the corners but I actually found I mix these up a bit too thickly which is why I put them into the smaller containers these ones just because I needed to add a little bit more flow troll and just found it was easier to do that in the smaller containers but I can just pour these back in will be fine all right so I'll just clear this away and I'll just put the rest of this metallic in there I think so I don't have this one made up. 
Now what I've got here is some scooped up paint from other, another painting I did. It's fairly runny and I used it in the last one and it's, I don't usually use them runnier than my other paints but I see Mina Villegas do that and she likes it so and the last painting worked out okay. A couple of little lumps came out then. Sometimes it's worthwhile to to sieve your paint if you've scooped it up because sometimes you can get little bits in it if you're not careful. Right, just take that out. Oh, there's a puppy complaining. Is that it? You just tip your paint sideways, get it in the light, and then you can see any lumps or bumps sticking out. It can help you to find any bits. There might be a bit there. Sometimes it's just an air bubble. I don't think that was anything. Okie dokie. Right, so... Let's do it. I just like to rest my arm on something. A lovely lady called Shell suggested that. Okay. What's wrong? One of my dogs is asking something. Right, I just poured in the rest of what the last painting, I just had a little bit left, so I just poured that in there. I think again, I've got far too much paint. All right. Let's see how this one turns out. Get it in the middle. Again, there's lots of purple. If I can turn it around. It. It's going to get ripped wrecked so it doesn't matter that much but that I'd practice what Sarah Mack does in the middle and she goes backwards and forwards to and hers end up looking like a rose I don't know <laughs> mine is anyway I don't want too much of that white in the middle do I this which is out of the metallic pearl. I don't think it makes any difference really but oh, look some lovely cells coming up already. I might just give that a, a quick torch actually. Get the air bubbles out. I should use something thinner. Maybe 
Just a thinner one of thinner popsicle stick. Oh, there's a puppy. They do make squawks every now and then if it's anything serious. Of course, I'll go over there and see what's going on. I'd like to take that white through a bit more. Ah. So you can do whatever pattern you want. There's no rule book about this. As Julie Cube says, it's your art room, your rules. And I like that. I'm not quite sure. Well, puppy wants to play with my 12-year-old and she says, no, go away. There's too much white in the middle. So it's terrible. Oh no, that's awful. <laughs> oh dear, 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 dear. What have you done? This really is a wrecked ring for. No, I don't like that. All right, so I shall scoop it up. And no, I haven't gone out and bought plastic spoons. I've had these spoons for about 12 years, I think, and they were never used. All right. Oh, look how thick paint that is there. So there's no harm doing whatever you want to your painting. Well, it might be harm, but it's just for you to decide. Oh, I'm getting rid of all that white in the middle. That's one way to do it. <laughs> all right now I'm dribbled all over there which is something I should have been more careful about all right so like all this is going to be stretched out so you want to get it how you want it first of that orange which really did not suit even though it wasn't orange it was actually the magenta which is in this painting that mixed with the gold of course made orange if I'd have thought about that all right I think that's all right I think that's quite pretty let's give this a whirl all right so I've got these lots of push pins underneath so I can hold it underneath instead of doing what I'm doing right here. I'm going to remind myself to do it. All right, I'll just go towards that corner. 
and then back to the middle. And then I might just carry on to this corner. Back to the middle. It's nice just to stretch it out for a bit before you go off the edges if you can. Obviously sometimes it goes off all by itself, but you can control it as much as possible. Alright, I might let this just go over the edge here. Back to the middle. Like you don't have to have the middle being the middle of your painting either. You can do it however you want. No, I might just quite like that bit of gold there, which I'd quite like to keep if possible. I might change your mind later, but I do that. It just brings it over the edge. Put your finger on it and then you drag it down and it just brings that paint down. Bring it back to the middle. That way I kept that bit of gold just there, which I was liking rather than that just go off, which it was about to do. Like, see all these beautiful lines here, all these striations are so pretty, but they were probably all going to get <laughs> mainly tipped off. But again, I can maybe see if I can do that there. And you do it there, because there's a fair amount of paint that I can just do that with. Like just, we have to tip it a little bit, pull it over, pull it over. I don't know if you can see beyond my arm, sorry about that. But at the moment there's just black there on that bit, so I'll just, yeah, I think I have to tip that just a bit more. I'll leave that for now. You can always go back a bit later and put stuff where you want it. Just swirl this around a bit. Okay, I might go off that corner now. See, the base coat is just there to help your paint to slide. I quite like that, like that, up in that corner. You've got to be careful there. You don't want all the paint weight at one end. So I might, having thought that, I might just do that to bring most of the paint back and then slowly do it. So hopefully not as much. I don't know, but we can try. I quite like that pattern like that. has to go over here a little bit more. That ah, puppy's trying to play with someone. I'm going to keep another puppy from the litter just born. You might realise I like having lots of dogs. <laughs> the crazy dog lady. Or something. As you do what you're enjoying, why not? And I do enjoy my dogs. They're good company. They don't argue with me. Well, they can sometimes try to, but <laughs> sometimes they win. Yeah, I don't know. It actually does go okay. Right, so we've got some purple here, so I just was explaining in my last video how it's a good idea sometimes to keep your, well if you don't, put it this way, if you don't happen to throw out your paper towels after you've used them, like here I'm going to do it away from the canvas a bit, but I'm wiping my hands off with a, it's actually with a used, a previously used paper towel because it's just as absorbent even though it's been used once before and then if you, you know, obviously when it gets too yucky you can throw them out but sometimes when there's only a little bit, like this one only had a little bit on it, you know, once it's dried out just stretch it back out again and 
rather than going through all, oh, I haven't got, I did have a damp cloth as well to wipe my hands with, but I've left that over by the sink and it's a bit hard with the microphone just to dash over there. All right, so that's good enough. Now I just want to scoop up some of this purple here and just let it go over the corner. Try and get it to match the pattern. Yeah, that worked. That's purple over there, isn't it? Maybe a little bit of... Let's see if that works or not. Also, putting it on there can help drag the paint down, which is another reason... Oh, got an argument happening behind me. <laughs> um, so that's a reason why it's important to go around if, once you've finished your painting to go around with something and scrape off the bottom of your canvas because that paint will be dragging down the paint that's on the top if you don't scrape it off and you've actually got to be a bit careful because if someone's done this and then slip and oh, up it goes and yeah, you just got to do it a little bit carefully until you know what you're doing basically and even then you can make mistakes. Get that out of the way so I can, oh look, oh, there's a gap over there so while we're at it, may as well do that corner. Um, we'll just scoot this back over here so I can find the paint similar to those colours, which we'll see. Because they are striated, you want to try and... Yeah, I think that worked. Yeah. I'll have to look on the other side in a minute. I need to scrape off the bottoms. You can use anything. I'm using my palette knife now. I might as well turn it around. Got a dog fight behind me. <laughs> it's a little puppy jumping all over my five-year-old pebble. <laughs> they do like to play. Sounds a bit vicious sometimes, but really it's not. They are just playing. I can't easily turn the camera around, unfortunately, to show you. I don't know that that worked that well. Sometimes you can kind of start a new pattern, you know, like it might be a new pattern going down there. No, that really didn't work. And if you still can't get it right, you can still just, when after the painting's dried, then you go back with a paintbrush and just try and match up the colours to how you want it and paint them in. I really like that. I think that's really pretty. To me, it looks like... Hey, guys. Hey. Ruby, 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 Ruby. And Pebble, can you stop playing for a minute? Good girls. Just not while I'm filming. Oh, and the puppies are... Babies are puppy joining in. What was I saying? This reminds me of, in Australia, we have an orchid called the spider orchid. And... The actual colours of the spider orchid are a lot more vivid, but here the background's more vivid. But yeah, just the shape of it does remind me of a spider orchid. So any of you who are familiar with the spider orchid, tell me, do you think that looks like a spider orchid? In the comments. Okie dokie. Well, I will just give this... I think the dogs are ready to play. Just give this a torch. And we'll be done. Now please wait and see the dried results at the end. I'll wait until these are dry before I put them up.
That's been a couple of days. Yeah, I'm really pleased with that. I think it's really pretty. All right, thanks heaps for watching. I've, I've just noticed that you can't see the top, can you? I'll just bring this down a bit. That's so pretty. that one and this is the one I did previously. I expect I've already put this one up on my channel. So yeah they're quite different aren't they? I think using that satin enamel in the middle <laughs> told you it could get out of hand. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching and if you haven't subscribed yet I'd love you to subscribe to my channel and if you hit the notification bell uh, and ask to be notified for all and then you will get notified when I do more videos and if you have enjoyed this video please click the little thumbs up button that would be really nice and yeah I've got a Facebook group called Acrylic Pouring and More for all artists at all levels and would love you to join and you know, share your artwork, see what you're doing and yeah, place to chat with each other in a positive environment. Okay, thanks again and I'll catch you again soon. Thank you, bye. So the last rays of the afternoon sunshine, just enough to show you the gold glisten. show you it in another shade. Little pebble. And there it is in the shade. Alright. I'll catch you next time. Thanks heaps for watching. Bye.